384 kilometers away, in the southern sea of tranquility, there is a place where time moves differently. If you were to stand there today, 56 years after Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin ascended the ladder and blasted away, the first thing that would strike you is the silence. It is a silence deeper than anything on Earth, a vacuum where sound simply does not exist. But it is the stillness that is truly unnerving. The Saturn V building up to 7.6 million pounds of thrust, and it has cleared the tower. On Earth, 56 years is a lifetime. Since 1969, empires have fallen, the internet was born, the climate has shifted, and billions of human lives have begun and ended. We have built skyscrapers and torn them down. Forests have grown and burned. But at Tranquility Base, the clock stopped the moment the Eagle's ascent engine ignited. Or did it? There is a popular misconception that the Apollo 11 landing site is frozen in amber perfectly preserved for eternity. We like to imagine it exactly as it was in the photographs. The glistening gold foil, the vibrant red, white, and blue of the flag, the sharp technological contrast against the gray ancient dust. But the moon is not a museum. It is a harsh, dynamic, celestial body. While there is no wind to scatter the dust and no rain to rust the metal, the universe has not been kind to the artifacts we left behind. Today, we are going to take a mental journey back to Stadio Tranquillitatis to examine the forensic reality of what remains. We will look at the science of degradation in a vacuum and the philosophical implications of our first footprint in the cosmos. To understand the current state of the landing site, we must first understand the environment. To the human eye, the moon looks peaceful. In reality, the landing site is subjected to a brutal, rhythmic violence. For 56 years, the Eagle's descent stage and the surrounding equipment have endured the lunar day and night cycle. This is not a gentle temperature shift. For 14 Earth days, the sun beats down relentlessly, heating the surface to over 260 degrees Fahrenheit, 127 degrees Celsius. Then, the sun sets, plunging the site into 14 days of darkness where temperatures plummet to minus 280 degrees Fahrenheit, minus 173 degrees Celsius. This thermal cycling is a destructive force. Materials expand and contract over and over again, more than 600 times since 1969. Metal fatigues, seals crack, adhesives separate. The landing site is slowly being pulled apart at the molecular level by the simple turning of the moon. And then there is the radiation. Without an atmosphere or a strong magnetic field to protect it, Tranquility Base is bathed in direct solar ultraviolet radiation and cosmic rays. This invisible bombardment breaks the chemical bonds of polymers, dyes, and fabrics. It is a slow, silent disintegration. Perhaps the most poignant question concerns the American flag. The planting of that flag was the symbolic climax of the space race, a splash of color in a monochrome world. So what does it look like today? Scientific consensus suggests a ghost. The flag purchased for the mission was not a specially engineered space-grade artifact. It was a standard nylon flag made by Annan Flagmakers, purchased for $5.50. Nylon is an organic polymer. On Earth, we know that leaving a nylon flag out in the summer sun for a few months causes the colors to fade. On the Moon, that fabric has been subjected to 56 years of unadulterated raw UV radiation. The red and blue dyes would have been the first to go, bleached out of existence decades ago. By now, the structural integrity of the nylon itself has likely failed. The flag of Apollo 11 is almost certainly bone white, a blank, bleached rectangle. However, there is a specific detail about the Apollo 11 flag. Buzz Aldrin reported that the exhaust from the ascent engine blew the flag over as they lifted off. So, it is likely lying in the dust. This might have actually preserved it slightly better than if it were standing, shielding one side from direct radiation. But the most likely reality 
is that it is a disintegrated pile of white fibers, or a bleached white sheet lying like a surrender signal to the sun. Philosophically, this is a profound image. We went to the moon to claim it, to mark territory with national colors. The universe, indifferent to our politics and our borders, has erased those colors. It has turned a symbol of nationalism into a symbol of peace, or perhaps a symbol of emptiness. The moon does not care for our flags. The largest artifact remaining is the descent stage of the lunar module, the Eagle. This is the launch pad that served as the base for the ascent vehicle. It sits on four legs, wrapped in that iconic gold and orange insulation. That insulation, Captain Foil, is incredibly fragile. After five decades of thermal expansion and contraction, combined with the constant micrometeoroid bombardment, the foil has likely flaked and shredded. The intense UV radiation has probably darkened the gold to a dull bronze or brown, making it brittle like old parchment. If you were to touch the foil today, it would likely disintegrate into dust in your gloved hand. The underlying structure, built of aluminum and titanium alloy, remains intact. It stands firm, a metallic spider rooted in the regolith, but it would look aged. It would look like a derelict ship found in a desert, stripped of its luster by the sun. The plaque on the leg, which reads, We came in peace for all mankind, is stainless steel. It is likely one of the few things that remains pristine, legible, and gleaming. A message designed to outlast the medium that carried it. Then we come to the footprints. The boots of Armstrong and Aldrin pressing into the lunar soil. These are the most human marks we left behind. In popular culture, we are told they will last forever. Scientifically, this is mostly true, but with caveats. The moon has no wind and no water to wash them away. The lunar soil, or regolith, is jagged and sharp. It locks together like pieces of a puzzle, holding shapes incredibly well. However, the moon is not static. It is constantly bombarded by micrometeoroids, tiny particles of dust moving at bullet-like speeds. This process is called gardening. Over millions of years, this bombardment churns the topsoil. But 56 years is a blink of an eye in geologic time. The gardening rate is estimated to turn over the top millimeter of soil every few million years. Therefore, the footprints are still there. They are crisp. They are defined. The ridges of the boot soles are still visible in the gray powder. There is something haunting about this permanence. On Earth, our footsteps are washed away by the next tide or covered by the next snow. Our impact is fleeting. On the moon, a single step is a geological event. Those prints are a frozen moment of human biological movement, preserved in a vacuum. They are fossils that haven't had to wait to become stone. They are as fresh as the second they were made, yet they belong to a time that is slipping away from living memory. We must also confront the less romantic aspect of the site, the trash. To save weight for the ascent and to bring back moon rocks, the astronauts jettisoned everything they didn't need. Scattered around the base of the eagle are jettison bags. These contain food wrappers, urine collection devices, and feces. There are also space boots, cameras, and tools. This debris field tells a very human story. We are explorers, yes, but we are biological entities. We consume, we excrete, and we discard. From a scientific perspective, these jettison bags are now among the most valuable experiments on the moon. Inside those bags is human biological waste, containing bacteria and microbial life from 1969. Are they dead? Are they dormant? Have they mutated? If the bacteria in that waste has survived in a dormant state, protected deep inside the waste and the bag, it would redefine our understanding of the resilience of life. The Apollo 11 site is an inadvertent biology experiment that has been running for 56 years. When we look at the Apollo 11 site in our mind's eye today, we are not just looking at metal and dust. We are looking at a mirror. 56 years ago, the human species briefly united to push three men across the void. 
The site they left behind is a monument to what we are capable of when we focus our collective energy. But the degradation of the site, the bleaching of the flag, the flaking of the foil, reminds us of our fragility. We build monuments of stone and steel, believing they will carry our legacy forward. But the universe is entropy. It breaks things down. It erases colors. It returns order to chaos. Yet, the footprints remain. In a thousand years, or ten thousand years, if humanity has vanished from the Earth, those footprints will likely still be there. They are the longest lasting mark of our existence. The silence at Tranquility Base is not empty. It is heavy with history. The site stands as a testament to the moment we broke our chains to the Earth. It is a lonely, dusty, beautiful desolation. As we prepare to return to the moon with the Artemis missions, we must look back at Apollo 11, not just as a victory of the past, but as a warning and a promise. The warning is that time erodes everything, even our greatest triumphs. The promise is that we can go where nature never intended us to go. The eagle is sleeping. The flag is white. The world has changed. But up there, in the sea of tranquility, it is still July 1969. The ghosts of our greatest adventure are waiting for us to return. Thanks for watching until the end. See you in the next video.